Finding an excellent off-market deal can be like finding treasure. There are several benefits to finding deals that haven't been listed for sale or advertised to other investors and the public market, including less competition and significant savings. And if you can find an off-market property under market value, you can turn and sell that to someone else for a profit doing very little. This video will break down 12 ways to find off-market deals to wholesale. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share how much a wholesaler made from me on a recent transaction. It might shock you. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. The idea behind getting a property off market is that you can pick it up at a discount. This may sound like you're taking advantage of a potential seller by buying the property from them for less than they might be able to get on the open market, but this is not always the case. Many sellers prefer not to deal with real estate agents and pay commissions. They prefer not to have strangers walking through their homes. And in some cases, they may be looking for a quick closing and therefore may be willing to discount their property to meet their needs. This can be a win for them and it can be a win for you as a potential buyer. So how do we find motivated sellers who might be interested in selling their homes off market? Number 12, flyers. Flyering a neighborhood is still an excellent way to get your message out. You can either drive around and put out flyers or hire companies that offer this kind of service. There are two methodologies here that I've seen work successfully. One is a bright colored flyer that grabs someone's attention, or the alternative is that you make it look like it's a handwritten note to a potential seller. They may be more likely to respond to a seemingly handwritten note versus a printed flyer, but both can be successful ways to find opportunities. This can get expensive very quickly depending on the number of flyers you're sending out, so come up with a budget and stick to it. Number 11, calling for sale by owner or rental ads. Go through for sale by owner posts and simply give them a quick call. You should be able to tell rather quickly whether you're dealing with a motivated seller or someone looking for a pie in the sky number to sell their home and if they get it, they'll happily sell that property. The other option that I like is contacting rental ads. Most novice landlords manage their own properties and are highly motivated to sell when they have vacancies. So by calling rental ads and asking if they'd be interested in selling, you may be surprised how much interest you may get from the person on the other end of the phone. It's also a great way to connect with other real estate investors. Even if they aren't currently selling, they will keep your contact for the future if they decide to. Number 10, billboard ads. Another great way to get your name and investing interest out there is to put it on a billboard. The challenge with billboard ads is that people are often driving and can't write things down, so I suggest coming up with a catchy phone number or website that people will remember. Sometimes the cheesier the better here. Number nine, radio ads. Radio ads can be an affordable alternative to some of the other items listed here. Radio ads are great if you're targeting a particular demographic. For instance, many seniors still listen to the radio in their car and they may be in a position where they're looking to sell their homes and downsize. This can be the perfect potential seller and a great wholesaling opportunity. Choose your radio station carefully and craft your message for the demographic you're going after. Number eight, SEO or a website. Setting up a website and optimizing your search engine optimization can be a great way to find off-market deals. You may wanna consider buying a very local domain. For instance, if I was trying to purchase off-market deals in Toronto or more specifically High Park, I might get the domain we pay cash for houses in high park.com. I know it sounds cheesy, but think about what people search for on the internet and create a domain that's pretty close to that. You may have some good natural SEO traffic, which doesn't cost a lot of money. Websites are also great for providing a lot of information to your potential buyer and sellers compared to flyers and ads when they land on your website. Number seven, social media. Use social media to your advantage for free advertising. Post what you're looking to buy on various social media outlets. This doesn't need to be overly complicated. Turn on your camera in selfie mode and record a 30 second video explaining to people what you do and that you're looking to buy properties. Sometimes the less polished this video is, the better. Just be yourself and get it out there and you might be surprised with the kinds of results you get. Of course, you'll wanna change it up every once in a while, so come up with some creative ways to deliver the same message and you'll see success here. Number six social media ads. Social media ads are a great way to market and get the word out. Wholesalers use this method frequently. You've probably seen the we buy houses ads across your social media feeds at some time or another. These ads will stick out to people actively wanting to sell or considering to sell. Ads 
ads versus using standard social media posts means more people than just the ones that follow you or stumble across your page will see your ads. And you can target a specific audience with social media analytics. Number five, driving for dollars or walking for dollars. Keep your business cards or flyers handy while you're out and about walking around. Drop them into mailboxes of properties you'd be interested in buying. I love properties that look run down or have deferred maintenance. Those are ripe for people looking to sell. This method may be more time consuming, but it targets specifically what you're looking for. And if you can't get a hold of a property owner, you can go to City Hall to see public tax roll addresses. Usually the property owner receives the property tax bill, even if they don't live there. You want to send mail to the owner stating your interest to purchase privately. And if you want to make sure they receive it, you can send it registered mail. Number four, bandit signs. I'm sure you've seen these on the side of the road. While they're illegal in most places, they can be effective, but be careful if you use bandit signs. Just know that there could be consequences. The idea with bandit signs is to develop a quick, catchy marketing sign that lets people know exactly what you do and how to get a hold of you. The simplest ones are bright and say things like, we buy houses for cash, with a phone number or a website listed on it as well. Number three, friends and family. Your friends and family can bring you great off-market deals. The more you let people know you're actively looking to buy houses, the more likely people will spread the word and bring you potential opportunities. The great thing about friends and family is they're usually warm leads that convert well to opportunities. The bad thing about friends and family is that you want to be careful that it's not being perceived that you're profiting off the backs of your friends and your family, or it can ruin your relationships. Number two, realtors. Don't forget about realtors. Just because a realtor may bring you a transaction, it doesn't necessarily mean that property's gone to market. Realtors may get a call from a client and if they're good at what they do, the property may not need to go to market if they can pick up the phone and call their connections who are already looking to buy something that matches their client's needs. Realtors can potentially bring opportunities right to you if they know what you're doing and what you're looking for. This is why it's essential to build connections with them because you may be able to get first dibs on a great property. Realtors may be approached by private sellers for very various reasons, or they may have pocket listings that haven't been posted to the market yet. Reach out to them and let them know what you're interested in. And number one, purchasing lists. In the US, you can purchase data of all kinds. Your best bet is to find someone who's gone through one of the three Ds, death, disease, or divorce. These may be motivated sellers looking for a quick closing. There are all kinds of paid services available in the US market, and this is why wholesaling and finding off-market deals is a little easier in the US. Privacy laws in the US are very different, so it's much easier to find out who owns a property. This is different in Canada and puts wholesalers at a slight disadvantage, but it just means you have to work a little harder to find potential off-market deals. As promised, I wanted to share how much profit a wholesaler made from me on a recent flip that I did. Because wholesale fees are disclosed once you've signed a contract, you often find out after the fact how much the wholesaler is making. In my case, the wholesaler was able to purchase the property at such a steep discount that they made $80,000 on a wholesale fee. I still got the property under market value and I flipped it for a profit, but spoiler alert, the wholesaler made more by selling me a piece of paper than I did spending nine months flipping a property. So for those interested in finding off market deals and wholesaling them, there's great potential to make large amounts of profit with minimal risk. If you'd like to learn more about finding off market deals and how to wholesale them for profit, you can check out my free masterclass webinar at darrenvoros.com. If you have any other real estate investing related questions, leave those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.